What is up guys, this is your random move guy here with another random trailer review. Yeah, it's been a while, but yeah, I'm back. And yesterday there was two trailers that dropped, the Power Rangers one and the one we're looking at right now, the Logan trailer, the second one. Let's get to it. So right at the bat, I just want to address the issue with the comic book. Now, a lot of people are digging around trying to find out which comic book this is, uh, how it relates to the movie. And you got that first comic that Logan picks up with the green pterodactyl thing, who I should know the name of, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. Now that hints towards a storyline with Mr. Sinister and Genosha and the whole kind of replicating mutants and whatnot. But sorry to disappoint a lot of you, Fox don't have the rights for any of the comic books. All the comic books in this trailer are fake. Now the whole comic book thing is kind of breaking the fourth wall. And who else does that? Deadpool. This isn't going to be the only Deadpool influence we see in this trailer. Now, even though the comic book isn't a real world comic book, it doesn't mean that it doesn't tell us a lot about this movie. For instance, I mean we see the yellow, the blue and yellow costume. Now adding the comic book into the trailer and the movie says a lot about the direction that Fox are taking these movies moving forward. First of all, we know that the rest of the world know about the X-Men. And at some point they must have been wearing blue and yellow costumes, as in the classic X-Men costumes, which we only kind of saw in X-Men The First Class, and we kind of got a little bit of it at the end of Age of Apocalypse. Now in that scene, you actually see Rogue like falling down, and Wolverine is kind of looking over like, what the hell, no! Which leads me to believe that Rogue actually dies in that scene because the next comic book Wolverine picks up is one of a funeral. Now if you remember the previous trailer there is a scene where Logan has kind of got his hand on a tree and he's all sad and he's at a funeral. A lot of people were speculating that this was Storm who died because Wolverine in the comics had a relationship with Storm. However because of what they showed in that comic book I believe it's actually Rogue that dies. When we were first introduced to Wolverine it was him and Rogue. Rogue basically found him in a bar there's a whole bonding session between Wolverine and Rogue, which kind of carried on throughout the whole movie series, if anything. And in that scene with the comic book, he's like, this is not how it went down. So it's clearly something that is affecting him. Now, we all know that Wolverine has got a lot of baggage. I mean, half the time couldn't remember what he went through. Uh, and the stuff that we do know he went through was pretty crap. He saw Jean die, uh, Cyclops died, everyone died at some point. And in Days of Future Past, he went back in time again, kind of corrected things brought everyone back to life and it looks like everyone died again except for Professor X of course because yeah he's 90. But yeah it's pretty safe to say that Logan is really tired and probably fed up for life at this point. Like in the previous trailer we can see Logan is struggling with his healing factor. I mean he's got loads of scars and everything. In this trailer we actually see Logan grabbing onto his blade and pulling it out like it's stuck or something which looks pretty nasty. And as we remember from the very first X-Men movie it hurts every time those claws comes out. When they come out, does it hurt? Every time. Which makes X-23 even more of a badass because, yeah, she's got claws too. She's a kid and they come out. You can actually see the scarring right at the end when her and Logan are driving away. You actually look at her knuckles and it's all bruised up, which leads me onto X-23. Now, one of the things that disappointed me about the previous trailer is that we didn't really see much of her. Now, I'm not going to lie and say that I'm some sort of expert in X-23. My only knowledge of X-23 is that she's a clone of Wolverine and she was in Marvel vs. Capcom sick game. But yeah, we actually get a lot more of her in this trailer. I mean, right at the beginning of the trailer, we get the impression that, yeah, she's a little feral. Think of Elle from Stranger Things. She basically has no idea how things work in the real world. She kind of picks up everything that she wants. No social skills, basically. And while we've got the shot up here, this guy looks like Quicksilver. That can't be a coincidence. But rather than portraying X-23 as this sort of badass, invincible character, the trailer constantly reminds you that, yeah, this is a little kid. So Logan's like, no, bad girl, naughty girl, stop it. Right before he actually steals the cigar himself. We see her two little claws come out as she's approaching the Reavers. And we saw a lot of blood. I mean, a lot of blood. I mean, there was nothing about this trailer that said that it was a red man trailer. Holy but fuck. there were two F-bombs in this. Yeah, another bit of Deadpool influence. Yeah. So right from that first scene, we can see that there is a father-daughter relationship between Wolverine and X-23, which a lot of people have associated with The Last of Us, which makes sense. Look, it's a super popular and awesome game, and we'd all want to see a movie based on that storyline. So yeah, this is the closest thing that we're going to get. But this isn't Hugh Jackman's first time being a deadbeat parent. He did that movie Real Steel, which is a really good movie. And yeah, he plays deadbeat dad there as well which is also a futuristic movie as well. Now we know this movie is set in 2029 because director Mangold said so. Another thing that Mangold explained is that this character, played by Richard E. Grant, is a guy called Xander Rice. Now in the comic books, this is a scientist that was involved with 
creating X-23. Now, at the end of X-Men Apocalypse, it was hinted that we were going to see Sinister. Because in the after credit scene, we see some guy grab a, a bottle of Wolverine's blood and put it in a briefcase labeled Essex Corp, which is the organization that Sinister runs. Now, even though Mangold has said that it isn't Sinister, they planted loads of seeds in the previous movies. So why would they do that and not follow up with it? The answer is I'm pretty sure they are going to follow up with it. And even though they say one thing, directors like J.J. Abrams does it all the time. And as we all know, Sinister is able to shapeshift. He's a really powerful character. So who's to say he wasn't Xander Rice to begin with? Just throwing the idea out there. With all the stuff going on on Twitter with Pierce Brosnan and Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds, it's safe to say that we are going to see Hugh Jackman in some form in the X-Men universe. But wait, he said that it was the last movie he's doing as Wolverine. The way I'm interpreting it is, yes, he doesn't want to be Wolverine, full out Wolverine. One of the main reasons that Hugh Jackman has decided to hang up the costume is because of the training regime. End of the day, to look as ripped as that for like six months of a movie shoot, takes a lot of effort. I mean, you have to watch every calorie you eat and you're gonna have to probably train four or five times a day. Yeah, it's not fun. Having said that, if he's only making cameo appearances where he can keep his clothes on, or even better still, appear as a CGI character, yeah, we're gonna see Hugh Jackman's character appear again. I'm sure of it. And more importantly, this movie is based way in the future, as in the death of Wolverine. The death of all the X-Men, in fact. And as we know with previous movies, they're kind of playing around with when these movies are based. The way I see it, we're definitely going to see Hugh Jackman again, but earlier on in the timeline of things. Does that make sense? At least until they reboot the whole franchise as a whole. But if this is the very last time we're going to see Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, we have to see him in the classic costume. Where he gets handed that briefcase with the classic orange and black costume, yeah, we got to see something like that. But yeah, all in all, I'm a lot more excited now after watching this trailer than I was in the first trailer. But what do you guys think? Do we honestly believe that this is Hugh Jackman's last appearance as the Wolverine? And do we think that Xander Rice is also sinister as well? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to me over the last month and a half. So whoever you are and whatever you did it, thanks. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be coming out with more content more regularly. So yeah, that's the best way to keep up to date. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care.